Senator Hawley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Dr. Wang, if I could just start with you, I want to talk a little bit about the regional impact or potential regional impact of, of some of what we've been discussing. Last year, the governor of my state, along with the governors of Nebraska and Iowa, signed a, a, memor a memorandum of understanding to work on a clean hydrogen hub. They're very interested in, in what this could do, potentially this technology could do uh, for, uh, for the region. I wonder if you could just speak to the impact that this technology could have on the economies of Midwest states like Missouri, what we might see going forward. I mean, what, what do you assess as the possibilities there? Thank you, Senator Hawley, for that question. And certainly, right now, we are at the very early stages of research and understanding how to stimulate and potentially extract, extract hydrogen um, from the subsurface. And so, Certainly, if there are rocks that, that are iron rich in nature that we can stimulate, there could be many opportunities in your region and elsewhere to be able to use geologic hydrogen as a clean source of energy in the future. Very good. Um, let me just ask you about the potential effect here on, on farmers. We, Mr. Johnson's mentioned a couple times, I think, that, that uh, one of the products, byproducts of hydrogen uh, is uh, or hydrogen can be used to make ammonia. That's a key component, obviously, in the production of nitrogen fertilizers. That's of great interest to my state. We're a farming state. Of course, Russia's invasion of Ukraine severely disrupted the supply of fertilizer all across the globe, much to the detriment of, of farmers in Missouri and across the country. So I I'm wondering if you can speak to the importance of hydrogen and these kind of technologies to farmers in, in particular. What sort of benefits might they see from this technology were it to come online more fully? Absolutely. So we know that hydrogen is a great feedstock uh, and it's used to create ammonia for fertilizer. So if we can really stimulate and extract this hydrogen and produce very large quantities at very low cost, I think this could have significant implications to help and support the farmers. Yeah, very good. Um, Mr. Johnson, let me just ask you, speaking of, of farms and, and rural areas, you have said, um, I think in your, in your written statement, that uh, a, a growing, geologic growing geologic hydrogen will create new domestic high paying blue and white collar jobs, particularly in rural communities where the resource is discovered. I'm interested in the blue collar rural community part of that. Can, can you extrapolate there? Can you tell us more what, what do you think the potential might be? Well, from a probability standpoint, that this, is, this country is huge and most of it's rural, so when we find new hydrogen resources, they'll generally be in rural communities. You know, cities have built up around energy resources, not the other way around. Um, our view is the most likely commercial avenue for geologic hydrogen will be infrastructure that's built close to point of production. So if you find a reservoir of hydrogen in a rural community, you'll probably follow that up with an ammonia production facility or a sustainable aviation fuel production facility. And so. Drilling wells is a temporary effort where you're drilling wells and, and you're going to hire local labor to do that. Those long-term operating plants create high-paying jobs that last forever, right? And everybody finances these plants based on 20 or 30-year lifetimes, but we all know they operate for 60 years and 70 years as the backbone of local economies. And so geologic hydrogen can really establish that kind of backbone in rural areas. And, and specifically about farming, right, we import... 2.4 million tons of ammonia per year in the United States. Um, you know, Missouri was impacted by the spike in ammonia prices, which had nothing to do with the cost of ammonia in the U.S. It was the cost people were paying for ammonia in Europe getting from Russia, right? The U.S. is the largest net importer of ammonia today. Um, food security and energy security are both national security. So th this can impact our ammonia and our farming and our food system in considerable ways. And what would be, when you talk about blue collar jobs, help me understand what the potential is there. What, what kind of jobs are we thinking might be associated with this technology? I mean, what, what kind of jobs might it create for blue collar workers in particular? Plant operators, um, facility operators, you know, outside operators, technicians, mechanics, all the people who work. You know, if you look at the workforce that operates chemical plants, refineries, ammonia facilities, liquefiers, there's, there's majority of those jobs are blue collar, um, you know, skilled craft jobs. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Johnson, since the chairman gave me a, another opportunity to ask a question. Um, <laughs> me, that was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just ask you just a quick question about the ARPA-E 
grant that that uh, your company has received. I think the announcement said it was nine hundred thousand dollars. It sounded right to you. That's correct. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So can can I just can you give us a sense of of how you're going to use the money? And here's why I'm asking. It looks like you're an awfully well capitalized company, according to your SEC filings. You just completed a two hundred and forty five point seven million dollar financing round. You're getting money from Amazon. You're getting money from Bill Gates. Forbes reports that Gates and others are giving you a hundred million dollars. It's great. I mean, I'm happy for you. Um, but I'm just wondering, you're getting now money on top of that from the government, $900,000 of taxpayer money. So can you just, I'm sure you have a good plan to use it well. I'm just wondering what it is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, clearly that, that's a, that's a different, different amount of money than what we've been raising in the private sector. The, the investment into Coloma is based on Coloma using its data advantage and technology advantage to find existing natural hydrogen reservoirs. And that's, that's our focus. And, and so when the investors, when our shareholders look at it, they're investing because we're going for that, that near-term opportunity. Stimulation for hydrogen, this works. We're doing it today in our lab. The big question is, can you produce enough gas quickly enough out of a well for the economics to work? The science of it is real. It'll probably take five to seven years for us to really know if that works. Our shareholders don't want to fund that. The direction they gave us is focus purely on near-term hydrogen exploration. You know, if you want to do this, you have to f go find partners, academic partners. So we're participating in a larger academic group. That $900,000 goes to work that we're doing alongside universities and supporting them with data and work, but it's not that 900,000 will not be used exclusively by us. That's to fund a, a partnership and a consortium. Oh, so, okay. So some of, it sounds like then you're, you're partnering with the universities and so forth, you say. So some of this will redound to the public. I mean, it, if, if the universities get some of this information, the technology, the benefit of this, then that's gonna be more broadly available. Does that? Yeah, absolutely. Right? That our our in-kind contribution on this is a lot of the data that we've already assembled that can help move this further along. I mean, we're, we're a small part of a much broader program. Got it. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you.